Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to go over a very core concept in React, which is how can you create a custom hook? So for those who don't know, um, within the hook API in React, you're also able to create your own hooks and utilize them for many different reasons. One of the main reasons is to maintain a more um, organized code and also utilize reusable logic, which um, happens to work in cases where you want um, individual states to be isolated and you want to reuse those pieces of logics many times, right? So that might not be apparent as I explained it to you guys right now. However, as you work with more um, React applications and you implement um, custom hooks into those applications, you'll clearly see why it is very useful. So. Before we actually get into the tutorial, I would like to ask you guys to leave a like because that would massively help the channel grow. Subscribe if you're not subscribed because um, a lot of you guys are not subscribed and it would massively help me reach my 10k subscriber goal, which I really, really want to. And I would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like. So let's get into the tutorial. So as you can see right here, um, I already started off with a simple React application already created. And the reason why I already created this React application is because it is not important. Um, I basically created here a project which is very, very simple. All it does is it basically has a state called caller and it has a button right on, on the page, right? This button over here. And when I click on this button, all it does is it, it basically generates a random color and it changes the background of our page to that random color. You can see that I can click it how many times I want and it will continue to generate this. And this is actually pretty simple to do. All I had to do is um, I created a state, as I mentioned, a, a state which is called color and it is a string. And then in my div over here, I set the style. Um, first of all, I set some width and height, which aren't important, but I did this so that it's, you can it fills up the whole page. But then the background color for the div, I set it equal to hashtag plus the value of color, which is our state. And the reason for that is because we're actually going to generate a like the color in hexadecimal. And we can do that very easily because um, hexadecimals work um, through using um, numbers and letters. So in theory, we we can just generate um, random strings um, and just generate them at the same size as a hexadecimal caller should be. As you can see, we're substring we're, we're using substring of negative six, and we convert our um, string to um, base sixteen, which basically is hexadecimal. So that's the idea, right? Um, and if this is confusing for you, um, I would recommend searching up on how hexadecimal colors work. However, it's just as an, as an example, as you can see, um, basically, this over here is, is a piece of logic, which generates a random color um, in the hexadecimal space. And in this case, over here, as you can see, when I click the button, it just sets the color state to that random color. So it's very simple logic. However, I want to show you guys how to actually convert this into a custom hook so that we don't need to basically have our states um, existing inside of the same component as our um, UI, right? Because we currently have a state over here. Imagine if we wanna have many different states, then it might be a little bit unorganized. So let's start by converting this into a custom hook so that you guys can understand it better. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create um, a file over here and you need to call it like this. Um, by standards, you need to, every hook should start with use which um, is kind of the prefix for a hook and then the name of the hook. So I'm going to call this use um, random caller. This is the name of the hook that I want. And this is the file that I created. And inside of here, all a hook is, is just a function, but a function that returns some, some sort of logic, right? And to do that, I'm going to come over here and say const um, use random caller. And I'm just going to create this function over here. But the important thing is that every hook at the bottom should return something, right? Which is the logic that we want to access uh, whenever we call this hook. So, for example, whenever we we destructure a hook um, in React, we usually, as you can see right here, we destructure some values, right? So whoever created the use state hook knows that this it should return uh, a variable or which is the one we create over here and uh, a function. So this is kind of the structure it, dis it defined and these values are returned um, through the function. So in our case over here, we want to return the two pieces of logic that we have in this application right here, which is um, the state. So we want to return the state so that we can access the caller and we want to return a function that changes the state, right? So to do that, we're actually going to delete this over here. I'm going to actually import this use state and put it over here. 
and I'm going to delete it from here. And then I'm going to copy this um, state definition and just put it inside of the um, inside of our hook. And over here, all we have to do is we, we just need to write our logic and the logic mainly lies in the state creation, which is what we did over here, and the function which manipulates or mutates that state. So that function is this anonymous functions that we, that we created over here. So for now, what we can do is we can actually I'll just copy this over here. And I'll delete this function right over here. We're not going to write it over here, we're actually going to create a function over here called change caller, or whatever you want. And, or generate caller, something like that. And instead of here, we want to um, set change the state, right? So we just set the caller equal to a random caller. So these are the two pieces of logic that we had in the in the app.js. And now they exist inside of our hook. So all we have to do is we have to basically return this to logic. And now all we have to do is we need to make it so that we can access both the state caller and the function change caller in the app.js. So to do that, all we have to do is we just have to return inside of this object, the values, right? So I'm returning caller and I'm returning change caller. So whenever you have different states that you want to access on the hook, or you have different um, functions that you want to access in the hook, you can just return them like this, and it should work perfectly. And at the bottom over here, we need to also export. Um, so export default, um, use random caller, over here, uh, just so that we can have access to this hook whenever we want to import it. So this is basically done. And what we can do is we can come over here to the app.js. And we can just import here at the top, the use random color um, from and we can just access the file. So dot slash use random color. And now to access those values, we can just say const equal to use random color. So we're using the hook and we can destructure both caller and change caller inside of this. So we can access caller, as you can see, and change caller. And now it should work. Um, as you can see, we are using caller already. I just did, forgot to delete it previously, but um, caller is being generated as the background caller. And if we want to generate a new caller when we click on the button, we can just call the change caller function inside of here. And take a look at this, we are only writing one piece of one line of code that actually uses some logic inside of our app.js, whilst the, the app.js can mainly fo focus on like the UI and the JSX, right. So over here, we can just refresh this, it should work. When I click on change caller, it should continue changing colors, um, as if we had all of our states and functions inside of the same component. Okay, so now let's get into an example that is um, a little bit harder. However, it is more applicable to the real world. So basically, what we're going to be building is a hook, a custom hook that will be able to fetch data whenever you refresh the page. So that's just like a whenever you want to make an application where it queries some data. Uh, whenever you enter a web page, um, usually you have a use effect and a state to represent the response from the um, request and the use effect to basically make the API request immediately when you um, refresh the page, right? However, if you're doing this in many different components, again, it comes to the point where it's it, you're reusing code for many things, and it becomes a little bit messy. So what happens is you can create a custom hook, which um, I would recommend calling, for example, use query, which basically already incorporates all the logic behind the um, the fetching the data and also handling the response. And you just need to deal with the, whatever you want to do with the response. So we're going to build a simple example of that. And we're going to be using Axios to make the API request. So if you haven't installed Axios, um, I already installed and I already imported into this file over here. So to make this work, we need to first come up with an example. And the example I came up with is using this API over here, which is very simple. It's a free API. If you want to check out this is the URL, all it does is it returns an image a URL for an image of a random food. So you can refresh this and you'll see that it will show different Im pictures of food and dishes. So that's basically the API we're dealing with. And what we're going to build is just a web page which just displays that image, right? Whenever we refresh the page, it should show another image of another dish, um, which is random, right? So in order to do that, we want to create a use query hook. So let's come over here and create a use query .js. And we're going to do it very similar to what we did before, we're going to create a function called use query. And there's a lot of differences between this and the last uh, hook that we created. 
because of how we usually customize um, th this kind of hook, right? So over here, we're gonna export default use query. And let's here at the top, let's import whatever things we want in, uh, from React. So in this case, we wanna use the use state hook, the use effect hook, and that's basically it. It's gonna be from React over here, from React. So basically what we're gonna do is, we need to recognize what we wanna do here. So let's think about this. We want this to handle the, the, the basically the logic to make the request and then to hold the state for the response, right? So in here, we need to create um, some sort of state that is going to hold the response from the API request. So let's call this um, use state over here. And it's gonna be a, for now, let's just make it a, it should usually be an object. So I'll just make it an object. And then we'll come over here and say response and set response. So what happens is when you make the API request, it should return you a response. And whenever you make a query, and this is where we're gonna store this response so that we can access this response in our app.js. And we, instead of here, we need to write the logic for uh, making the request whenever you refresh your page or whenever on the first render, right? So to do that, we use the use effect. And now we don't need to use the use effect on every single different component that we want to make this work because we already have a beautiful um, hook that we can reuse many times. So with the use effect, we can just put over here the list of dependencies, which are which is going to be empty. And instead of here, we can put the um, logic to make the request. Now, recognize this. Um, what are we doing here? Are we actually going to put the Axios um, request over here? Well, you can do that. However, I wouldn't recommend doing this because um, you there's many different types of things that you can do with your request. You can set headers, you can pass a body, you can do whatever you want. And you also want to be able to customize and reuse this to the best of your ability. So what I like to do is instead of coming here and saying something like axios.get and just doing the request set of here, I like to actually pass the axios request as a function, as a promise into the um, parameters of this hook, which means that now if I come over here to my app.js and I am going to import um, the use query hook from um, the file that we just created, use query. And whenever I destructure this um, use query hook, so use query like this, and I wanna grab the response from this API request, so response, um, I can pass the axios.get request um, um, like this, for example, I can pass axios.get request and pass the URL for the function inside of here. So let's just grab the URL for the API and just put it over here. And now whenever we want to make a different request, we can just put it, pass it as the argument to the hook instead of writing it directly inside of here, which makes it a lot more reusable so that we can just put the, the request over here. And now this will obviously return a promise containing the data from this get request. So what we can do is instead of this use effect, we can just set, um, we can actually get the request, which is request is a promise um, because it's what we're passing as the argument. We can say request dot then, since it's a promise, it should return um, a fetch response, for example, this is how we're gonna call it. Basically, it should return promise, which returns the response from the API request. And let's call it fetch response. And in order to set our response, we can just say set response equal to fetch response dot data. And the reason why we're doing dot data is because if you ever used Axios, you know that um, the response from our API request is divided into many different, it's, it's an object and the data from that request is contained inside of the dot data. So basically we're just setting our response equal to fetch response dot data, which makes it a lot easier because now our response actually works and it's actually making the request. So all we have to do is just return this response and now we have a perfect hook that queries data from any API request we want to. And all we have to do is um, just pass it like this. So for example, let's test this. Let's come over here and create an image tag and um, pass. We know that response should contain an object containing the data from this API request, which should be just an, a single object with um, a single element called image containing the URL. So what we can do is we can say image and for the SRC, we can just say uh, response dot 
image, right? Because image is the URL. So let's see if this works. Um, and, and as you can see, it is working. Whenever we refresh the page, it shows an image of a dish um, constantly working, making the API request. And we can just like reuse this how many times we want. We can just, it, 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 it is independent. The state is independent from each, from each other. So we can just put this how many times we want. I wouldn't know why you would you want to do this. Maybe if you're making many API requests on the same component, but to different endpoints, this might be a reason why you would want to do this. However, this is the basic idea. So this is basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, I know this topic is a bit confusing, but if you have any doubts, leave a comment down below. Um, and I'm happy to help. I answer every single comment. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I see you guys next time.